Welcome back to Team Huddle. I'm Jalen Holston. Along with me, as always, is Keone McKeague, Nolan Chang, and Jared Shirai. Today, we're going to get into a lot of stuff, but mainly the NCAA championship. But boys, how are we feeling? How's the weekend going? All that good stuff. Check on in. It's a volleyball weekend for me. Right. Absolutely. Uh, it would have been a volleyball weekend, but we lost. <laughs> no, 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 no. So it was an early, early weekend he for you. Said, yeah, it was a chill weekend uh, for me. Uh, Not a lot of chores. You know when Jared's on, on uh, the games in the afternoon, you know. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's even so. He's playing live in the afternoon. You know, the season's Damn, bro. Uh, damn. Dude, I think oh. I stream for like... Yeah, five or I six like, hours when he's streaming for like seven day. hours a day you know he lost i was like <laughs> just screaming at the other team i'm not toxic like that man yeah 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 like that yeah not at all not ever toxic ever but uh yeah well let's get uh let's get our check-ins in for the for the week and whatnot nolan i'll flip it to you how was your week of coaching and nice other shirt, nolan. things you know what's up nice shirt nolan it's a great thank shirt you, thank you. yeah Rep it, baby. Hey, go rep it, baby. Um, <laughs> we started our f- first official boys' practices this week. Nice. Um, everything looks good. We have a fucking fifteen-man roster for the second half. Not oh, all of them. Oh my no, god! The, the, the crazy thing is, not all of them verbally committed to going to nationals with us. But of course, as we start getting all the you know signings of the new commits. Some of the returners are like, actually, I think I can make nationals. Like, bro, I just fucking picked up this kid because you're not right. going. Like, what are you doing to me? Jimmy, what are you doing? <laughs> Damn it, Kyle. Um, <laughs> no, but, like, it's, it's always a Kyle. It's yeah. Absolutely, I think the roster is so much stronger than it was. You know, not saying that there was some guys on my or that are on my team that can't get it done, but... I wish some of these kids had tried out during the first half is what I'm saying. You know, right, my yeah. roster may have been a little bit more constructed to win the, mm. considering everything now, but would you have beat us when we played you guys? Um, with this team, we would have had, a I remember seeing, I remember seeing your team, like we they weren't horrible. Cause you guys, you guys can serve us off the court and that's the biggest issue. And now I got guys who can actually pass the damn ball. Nice. So I think, I think that's, that's good the pickup biggest. Said. And our new OH two, or at least projected OH two, um, he's a young kid. I think he's a sophomore right now. Um, but he, he can play. He's so well-rounded. I'm just like, Oh my God, thank God you're here. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> this was a blessing. Thank this you. God. He walked through the door. <laughs> we, we, were, we were trying to keep it honest and like, Oh, 16s will pick up the 16s. 17s will pick up the 70s. We're not going to try to young, young guys mm-hmm. moving up to the team, but our 16 team is already bid qualified, so they couldn't. They were like, we got a locked roster already. Like our outsides are already kind of locked in. So I was like, I'll take him. Just, just send him here. We got to keep this guy in our system. I'll get make the offer. Um, so we got him. Uh, we're gonna have our next practice today. We had a I had a girls tournament yesterday. Same issue. They can't pass well, but they went two and one. So the game, I'm you know? thankful. The team that we did lose to was, of course, you know, the first game in the morning and. Yep, they don't really show up in the first game of the morning, so it was it was a little bit of a a landslide at some points. So, but other than yeah. that, good volleyball week, back in it, ready to go. Nice. Hell yeah, hell yeah, that sounds like a great week, man. Honestly, it's like ten out of ten. Get some new players, get some new blood, and getting ready for them them natties, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jared, how was uh, how was your week of coaching and whatnot? Uh, if you want to. <laughs> Have a long. <laughs> this is why. This is why we made the show so we can <laughs> converse. <laughs> things. Uh, so we had our quarterfinal game on Wednesday, and long story short, because I don't want to share it on the pod. <laughs> I'll tell you guys later. <laughs> but uh, we we lost in four. Um, mm-hmm. My my big outside um, came back from his injury. Only played right side though, but still killed it. Um, we had our opposite playing outside and then we had to play that jv kid again because one of our other outside said he couldn't go uh right around game time so it was a little bit of a, a management thing you know trying to get things going but um tip my hat to upland um good kids on that side just big pins 
banging balls and you know they made good adjustments they just started to to find the right flow of things and we just didn't make the adjustments needed to be made uh, just plain and simple that's what it Who's is the coach high school volleyball uh, i don't know i don't like him though uh, what does he look like <laughs> <laughs> i think one of the old coaches uh, i think he's on the he's uh the he's shorter than me i think or maybe about the same height as me um Caucasian man. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Angry never mind. looking all the time. Yeah. Typical white cis man. white men. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to be politically correct over here, bro. <laughs> this man Coach Jordan Lucas. So is yeah. he? Is he? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He was pretty. Oh, so, yeah. man. So that put a damper in my week. But um, I had practices for my girls on Friday. Uh, we did a one uh, one last practice for our high school boys on the Thursday, which was good because, you know, it just got them in the gym, played some sixes, just ate some food, had a good time, just everybody all around, get them back in the gym one together. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, uh, we would have been yeah. playing yesterday. But now it's just uh, getting ready for the VLA tournament. Next week, yeah, we'll let's go, we'll baby. We'll be there Are they streaming Chicago. that? They should be on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I don't know I if bet. you have to subscribe. It might be ninety nine cents, but you know, I don't give a damn. I'm watching. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually it's actually pretty fun. Um, yeah, they're they're gonna be have the men's thing, so there's the the cup like like always, and then they're gonna do the women's. The oh, women's first okay. first first, first women's VLA event is gonna be there as well. So it'll be a long weekend. I didn't realize I was gone till Monday. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, oh, because the other trip was Thursday to Sunday. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, my flight is for Monday. Oh, so, boy. But yeah, so just hearing up for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be a lot of fun. Uh, always, you know, like I said, great competition playing the VLA. You get to see all those uh, old school names or like ex college players, ex mm -hmm. um, overseas players. And, you know, so it's nice to do uh mix of the youth and the older generation i guess you would say yeah i think that's what i like more about the vla as opposed to the nba right now it's like there's you're you know i mean <laughs> i literally put it in the chat the other day i'm like you know like i could probably go set in the nba you know what i mean like they're not they're not you know the level is a bit you know different i feel like some of those guys i think of the vla had like the branding and marketing that the nba had it would be a way bigger yeah you know, I mean, League, the VLA, you know is I mean? the NBA is nice because, like, they have Long Beach City College. That's their home event, you know. That's where they, mm -hmm. they, they yeah. have a home yeah. gym where they, like, all our games are going to be played here. It's going to be a three-day weekend. It's this and that. They market really well. Um, but the VLA, I, I think that's the only thing they're missing out of it, in my opinion. Yeah. But Agreed. But yeah, so we'll we'll drop some links down below because surely everybody wants to chime in. Jared, watch Jared dish out some absolute but huh all weekend. I'll definitely but, tune hopefully, in. Hopefully. But hopefully. huh, there's no there's ain't they ain't no hope, man. I'm gonna put some money down. You, you I mean, there give is some... technically hope. Is Aha! Hope? I see what you <laughs> done there, you clever girl. How dare you? Anyway, son of a bitch, <laughs> son of a gun, you got me again. Uh, Keone, how was your uh, week of? <laughs> Check out post credits where we yeah, fan yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit of a foreshadow there. Uh, <laughs> Got a great episode of post credits coming up, guys. You got, don't want to miss that one. It's gonna be real spicy. A lot of hot takes. But uh, Keone, <laughs> how did your uh, drunken volleyball uh, team progress it, this week? Was it better? We did was win. it more? It was Let's go. Yeah, okay. Let's we go. Came back, we came back strong this week. Thankfully, we beat the number one team in the hey. league. So okay, that as well. Okay. Um, Here you go. We had to them their first no, no. loss. Uh, but yeah, either way, we had a really good game. Finally, I think I got like the full starting group together because um, we haven't had that yet. So this is the first time the the full six got to play together. I did have some issues kind of off court uh, with some of these guys who like seem to think they deserve more playing time. Um, mm. So that's why I thought it was interesting because we talked about managing egos in the last podcast. Uh -huh. um, so there are some guys who definitely were like kind of perturbed that they didn't get to play so much sure. in, the, in the last mm -hmm. game and then Big this words. game. Uh, so this time around, uh, what I did was because we, you know, it's even though we technically have to play all three no matter what um, for this specific league and they kind of count each set as a game, um, we only really need to win two of them. So what I did was just did like a full swap, let them play that second set since they wanted the playing time, and you know and get they, the ass beat. They did so. You know, <laughs> I threw them in there. I said, you know, 
this is you know you guys think you're the ish so here you go here's your ish sit sit the fuck down (laughs) yeah so (laughs) sit sit I can app like quarterback. Dude, just show Throw me the ball. The, what you call it? Yeah. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Show them the clip. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what it was. So it's that exact moment where. We'll do a real playing clip now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they, they obviously lost that second one. Um, we came back and then whooped them in the third one. So it was kind of like a, just a good humbling moment for them. Uh, it was just a teaching, teaching moment since, you know, this is one of those leagues where we don't really get to practice they don't really like like to get coached so it's one right. of those like i just got to do it in different ways to show them like this is you know this is the step up and you're not quite there so anyway uh but humbling, yeah we want humbling experiences yeah, yeah yes. we'll get to that eventually in this podcast. <laughs> yes. yeah that was that was definitely that moment for them it was a good game we had a good time afterwards drinking so we drank hell yeah that we beat so good times <laughs> Yeah, yeah, always, nice. always good, good times. Time. Can you imagine it was an angry time drinking. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure for them they were. For, the... <laughs> <laughs> for them, it was it was a little salt in the wound because we were right. so we're like we have all this food if you guys want to share because I'm sure you guys after are they just beat us, <laughs> like, you son of a bitch. Yeah. You want this L? L? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Well, that sounds like one hell of a great week. Um, I had the exact opposite. Um, to be oh, honest, <laughs> it was, no. it was a, oh, the boys no. are a the boys are in a rut, gentlemen. And when I say in a rut, they are in a rut so we had a game tuesday and a game thursday thursday night was a senior night but we'll get we'll start with tuesday because i think that was the more apparent one that led to the events of thursday so tuesday we had another matchup against a league opponent but you know our status now is we don't care we're playing for districts because we can't win league anymore so they were playing for pride, pretty much. It's a rival school for us. All the all the other Howells in our district are rivals. So there's North and Central. We played North. Um, my normal big gun outside, the basketball kid that I stole, he's like 6'5", whatever, you know. So he had a back thing last week, got to practice on Monday, was still tweaking, and I just said, F it, sit down, we'll take you out, not a big deal. <clears throat> My other outside that we ha- had been playing, um, he brands himself as a soccer guy. And at our particular high school, we can't punish kids for being multi-sport athletes. Um, and so that issue kind of came up again because after Monday, I'm like, I'm not going to get, he asked me, Hey, uh, I got a soccer game tomorrow. Uh, do you care if I go to that? And I'm like, if that's, what you feel like you need to do, then you are more than welcome. I can't, I'm not going to tell you no. Um, but I will tell you like, Hey, your team would like to have you here. Like that's kind of where I left it. <clears throat> sure enough, we get to the game and it's one of those games where we literally needed one high flyer outside to at least help us side out the ball more. And it, it really, it pissed off his entire team. He, he by himself and his own choices, the entire team after the game was just mad because he was not there. And they knew that if we had him, we at least would have had a better time in that game. Um, Cause we passed well. Um, I think my setter was a little off, but he still made some good choices. But when it came down to it, it's kind of, it's, you know, it's boys volleyball in 2023. You kind of have to have some outsides that can put the ball away um, and all that good stuff. So then we get to senior night <clears throat> and uh, before anything even started, I'm getting emails and stuff. Cause People are upset about, you know, t- Tuesday and all this nonsense. But the luau went off without a hitch. It was great. We got all the stuff set up. It was beautiful. Like, they had the lays all the way up to their ears. It was wonderful. Um, but they, you know, they had the same issue. And I benched the kid for missing because I felt like if I put him on the court, surely that's not going to go well. Um, and then ended up trying to play him a little in set three, but they got three out at home on senior night. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was hard for my, my three boys that were, uh, basically it felt like I was watching them play and then everybody else just didn't. Um, and so Friday's practice wasn't even a practice. We just had basically an hour and a half of airing out dirty laundry with everybody. And I mean, every little thing got touched on. And uh, the kid in particular from that we talked about on Tuesday, Mm -hmm. I mean, I think 45 minutes of it was just his teammates blasting him. And I'm like, 
Bam. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, like yeah. I, like I was yeah, trying to yeah, keep yeah. it a little civil, but I, at the same time, I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, like, let him cook. Hash you know out, what I mean? Like, cook. I'm like, and like, and then I, I tried to do the therapeutic thing, and I opened up a rebuttal. I was like, hey, you know, like your teammates have said a lot. Like, how do you feel about what they've said? And he played it off and told me basically everything else that I need to know moving forward for the season. And basically he confirmed that he will not be playing and touching the court ever again. I don't care how much we need an outside because when I asked him that question, it was more of like a, yeah, whatever. But he's like, yeah, sure. I'm like, uh, that's all you have to say. Like they just told you for 45 minutes, how they felt with you always choosing soccer over us. When we have a senior who is committed to play DH for baseball mind you like so he could be playing baseball games for you every know club game. stuff every like and he is here we have other guys that have commitments in football and you know all that other stuff and they're here but like you are the one that keeps leaving and you are one of the ones that could be very much a big part of our offense so like all you have to say for yourself after they express their concerns to you is sure so that's that's how that week went but um, wow. yeah, it was it was isn't, isn't that a little crazy? A little crazy. I'm curious for your for your senior night game. Do you guys schedule it on a game that's supposed to be like kind of a good game, or is it supposed to be like a we're guaranteed gonna? Is it your last last home game? I always or let my play? seniors pick. I mean, my like for example, my girls, my first year, um, I had a game in mind that was definitely a like <laughs> the layup win. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, kudos to them i they they picked the team that actually ended up winning the conference and they upset them in wow. five and i was like wow. okay good for you girls yeah yeah um and then like last year i think uh my girls wanted our right the new rival school uh, to come in and they played a great match but we lost in five it was 16 14 like it was an awesome match but you know is what it is um but yeah so i always let my players pick but normally yeah it's usually like your last home game or some teams do it that way uh, where they, you know, they circle the layup win, right? Where it's not yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. going to be any concern. And um, with all due respect, like the team that we did schedule should have been a win because we three owed them two weeks ago and it was not close. Um, yeah. But, you know, we've got to show up on the day and we had some people shuffled around and Damn. all that good yeah. stuff. But yeah, it just is what it is, man. And that's something that it's senior night. So you, it, it goes one way or the other. You get that first set win and usually that's how it goes and you roll or the shock of dropping that first set yeah. goes completely the other way because they're high schoolers and their brains can't really like, yeah, you know, yeah. I feel like we should do a segment day. on on senior nights. Oh, we definitely yeah. can. Yeah, because like the it can, like you said, they can go very many different ways with emotions and how you coach it and how things like that. I think that'd be a fun little segment yeah. we could do. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, like I said, I kept it positive all night. I did not care what the score was. And they played a great second set. They lost 38-36 in that one. But oh, wow. as soon as that set happened, I was like, okay, Damn. yeah, we're, we're not winning senior night because that was the, <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Like, that was the one. Like, if they didn't get that one, yeah, we, we done. We done. <laughs> well, that's like, how it always you know. is, right? You lose a yeah. big set like that, the next the next couple of sets is always kind of just like. Uh, Great foreshadowing uh, for our discussion. Unless you're using it. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a little bit of a down week, but I mean, they they get one more match at home, I think, next Wednesday, and then it's uh, that's you know, district time. You got to show up and try to do some stuff in the postseason, save your season a little bit. They're one game below five hundred, and I think that was their big goal coming into the year was to get a winning record, going from eleven and twenty something, I think, last year to basically almost even now. I mean, that's a pretty big step from where we were, yeah. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but uh, but in other news, we talked about some close sets in volleyball in, in regards to that. Boy, did we have a lot of those with this NCAA Men's Championship Final between the UCLA Bruins and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Holy cow, what a match. Uh, as far as the uh, bracket was concerned, our picks were basically perfect. I don't think anybody missed uh, the, at least the matchups that we predicted would happen. But um, I believe the championship was the one where we, some we did of differ. Us <laughs> some of us have some things to do in regards to who they picked for the championship, but we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> I 
If you're listening, we're all staring at Keone. We are we're staring here. directly yeah, at Keone. Like, this is it's a podcast, guys. Come on. But um, but yeah. So the UCLA Bruins for the first time in twenty, I think twenty plus years or something crazy like Too that, long. they fin- finally get to add a their twentieth championship title to that historic program. Um, after that, and John Spraw finally gets the monkey off his back. He's had so many close runs he's had so many great teams that fell short in like semifinals and whatnot and the rainbow warriors played an absolutely fantastic match as well they were they, was, they didn't get rolled on nothing i mean they, these were this is the epitome of what you want in a championship i felt like it was two teams doing exactly what they do at a very very high level yeah. um but so jared first let's just go through and give our overall impressions of the game and then we'll kind of dig into some of our favorite moments and whatnot so jared for you what was your overall takeaway from this championship final that we got to watch i think it was the best volleyball that i've watched in a long time oh, like yeah. at, at a collegiate level especially um yep. like you just watch two bangers go at it like the blocking to the digging to their like the from the pressure from the service line and just the one and will to know like we always talk about the big stage and the yep. sense of urgency both teams had a sense of urgency ucla doing it for spara uh, because they wanted to get that monkey off the back, you know, get a championship finally back to UCLA in how many years? And then UH, UH wanting to go back to back to back. You know, that's that's something that hasn't been done in, I don't know. I think ever. I think ever. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. UCLA might have been the last ever. one to do it, you know? Yeah, back in like the early the early days of volleyball. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, watching watching the way they were playing, um, the way they run the middles, like just a little bit of every everything. Even the auto yeah. system play, it was just like to a T, everything you want to teach, everything you want to see. And like, I don't know. And I, I was lost for words. I, I, I could watch that game over and over again because it was that good. Same, same. Nolan, how did you feel overall when um, after the match I got done? I only got to see like a set and a half because the internet crapped out. Spectrum, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Um, but <laughs> no, <Shalimar>. honestly, <laughs> I don't think it was Shalimar, but um, yeah. Great volleyball, and you know, just watching it, I did have that thought in the back of my head. It's like, you know, girls' volleyball on collegiate level is so much different than guys. Like, guys, it's banger after banger. Girls, it's like, who's gonna let the ball die first? It, it just, you know, the point ends within ten seconds for for guys' uh, volleyball. But absolutely, the blocking was sensational. David was going crazy on Bro. the right side. Um, honestly, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna say that they're gonna go back to back, but. If they have Rowan for three more years, UCLA is going to be a powerhouse for sure. Um, and I just think that uh, Hawaii put up a great fight. I did see, you know, the exhaustion in the third set, the service errors after service mm-hmm. error. Um, after that, was it 33 31 set? Two? Yeah. Yeah, it was a set um, two. Yeah. But yeah, absolute great fight. You know, you never want to see a team go into the national championship and just kind of roll over if things aren't going their way. And I think to come out, after that long set two and both teams still giving it their all was absolutely amazing to see. And I want to say one thing that if you don't watch men's volleyball or volleyball in general, do you, you have to understand like how much passion there is as fans for this game where you have a neutral site where George Mason University is hosting a game for Hawaii and UCLA, two colleges nowhere near them, and you have a packed house. Like you have to understand that there is a huge passion in the very small community of volleyball that is growing and growing each year. But just want to say great job. George Mason's getting that huge Mm -hmm. fan. Great job to the fans for coming out for that stuff. I say, I think it was a great, I think it looked like a great venue. It looked like a nice place to hold a a national championship final. There wasn't anything weird with like a a overhanging scoreboard. Like George Mason's got an amazing campus. So I'm sure that program will appreciate, you know, all those fans coming in and, um, it does speak a lot to how much boys or boys and well, men's in general has grown because I don't think, you know, 10 years ago, I don't think we could have filled a stadium like that um, for a, for, for a college final, yeah. let alone, you know, maybe an international final um, and so on. So yeah, big kudos to uh, George Mason for putting on a great event and a great semifinal and final for the uh, NCAA tournament. Um, Keone, your overall feelings after watching the, uh, the national championship. Let's go Bows. No, just <laughs> Let's go um, both. Overall, overall, I mean, yeah, like I think Jared said it. He hit it on the nail. Like, honestly, it was like some of the best volleyball I've seen just in years. Just absolutely phenomenal back and forths. 
Um, more importantly, I want to shout out that kid. I forgot what is his name, Jr. Or whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, Jr. Um, or something. I, I that kid Norris comes... the, the fourth or something. The fourth. Yeah. Smith? <laughs> oh, no. No. Jr. Norris the fourth. It's definitely not Jr. Smith. He would have messed yeah. something up. Towards yeah, Jr. Smith would have landed the other way. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that kid, um, yeah, he was phenomenal. I mean, if they did some sort of like MVP for like that, that kid just showed up and showed out. Um, literally, I think he scored like their last like seven or something, but it just, it just was great play after great play after great play. And Hawaii really didn't have an answer for him. Um, in, in the game entirely, like, honestly, I think one of the things that Hawaii struggled with was just keeping the momentum going. Um, every time they had an opportunity to really go out, they had like a lot of errors. Um, I think there was that one kid, <laughs> come on, Keone, what are you doing? Like your name it's always is, the Kiotis. We got that. It's like, it's always like, you have my name. You have one job. You come in to serve. And I think he had like three or four that just went straight in the net or underneath. And I was like, bro, come on. Like that was his one thing he had to do. And he just kept coming in and messing that up. And like, honestly, it's one of those things that like volleyball is a game of momentum. And when you have the momentum and you can't keep it going and you just – have an error like that like there were so many moments like that i think that just killed their momentum and for even as great as the team played in general and like they played all year when you kill the momentum like that with an error and i think that's like the worst thing is like when it's your own fault especially on a serve like i think it's just it sucks because that's when you need to be the most consistent and i think he had one kind of like late in that third game that really cost them like that that momentum going in so in general, UCLA played a hell of a game. Um, like I said, I don't really keep up with the college game often when I do catch it. You know, it's here and there. But this was just the talent on the court was absolutely phenomenal. So to be, I'm very, very curious to see what these guys do in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with all the sentiments. I I have not I, I have not seen a match that entertaining. I think. Uh, played at such a high level consistently throughout the match in a, yeah. in a very, very long time, even at the, I, I mean, I would argue even at the international level, like I think Kevin was kind of pointing that pointing that out on the broadcast as well. Like these two teams, man, like it just shows how far the men's game has come that at this level, we're seeing plays being made like that. Um, and so we can go back through and just some highlight moments for yourselves or certain areas that you want to talk about, maybe some decisions and whatnot. So Jared, I'll let you go first, maybe some standout moments for you. And what do you think of some of the coaching decisions that were apparent from both, you know, the Hawaii staff and then the UCLA staff? Mm, from the UCLA staff, I know like for me, it was to establish their middle. I mean, man, their middles were just yeah, ridiculous. And I'm not going to lie. <laughs> they, I'm not going to yeah. lie, though. I was very, very uh, impressed with, what was it, Haglin? Haglin? The, yeah. the smaller yeah, okay. middle. Mm -hmm. Like, he yeah. got a lot of blocks, a lot of good touches, like, committed to his routes. And I, I'm not going to take everything from the Hawaii side of the ball. Like, they did a good job of trying to slow down or even block, like, some of their – their big middles, especially getting OT the whole yeah. time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think Hawaii came in with a good um, game plan as far as like just trying to like contain that. Like, hey, you can go over me, but we're going to put ourselves in good de defensive positionings. Mm -hmm. um, but on the UCLA side of the ball, I think one thing that I've noticed through the match that I would say kind of helped them kill Hawaii's momentum was to contain Tele. Yeah. Like the offensive prowess that that guy can take over. Like mm -hmm. he can take fifty swings in a match and probably get twenty five kills. Yep. I think he was. I think yeah. he hit negative. I think he had one kill, two errors on ten swings. And because they were doing such a good job of containing him, they had to find somebody else to beat them. Because Tele loves to attack when he opens up his offense, because that's when you're supposed to attack. But the fact that they committed to that and said, "Hey, we're not gonna let you beat us. Your hitters are gonna have to beat us." And I think they did a like the UCLA block is huge. I think they yeah. did a good job of containing. Uh, Galloway, Spiros, and, you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I looked at the stats and everything as well, and Hawaii hit for good numbers. But I yeah. think I think what helps is that UCLA did a really good job of slowing the ball down 
and giving them more op- opportunities. Uh, even recycling balls um, offensively. Um, Rowan makes it uh, an okay set, but it's it's not a set I want to swing at. Like we're gonna hit into the block, take the recycle, and then they set somebody else and they get a kill off of that. And it's just the, those little things that you don't see in the stat line. Is the things that you have to actually watch the game to understand to say, hey, we're getting second, third, fourth opportunities and we're capitalizing. And I don't think Hawaii did that enough on their side of the ball, at least in my opinion. Um, Hawaii's biggest thing for me, I think Keone had brought it up, is if they served with better efficiency, this could have been a really, really different game. Mm -hmm. Because they, from from the end line, I think they're the better serving team. I do think they're the better serving team. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the only reason why the scoreline was it was. Because like Keone said, when they get on momentums, uh, they mess it up with a, with a servicer. Or they spray a ball. I mean, look at the final point of the match. You get a free ball and you overpass. Like, mm. it's it's those balls Bro, that really man. matter in everything. Yeah, right? We, we always talk about the onesie twosies. The, the one, two points that make a match. And in a high caliber match like that, that's the balls you always need to take care of. Mm-hmm. It's going to cost you matches, and it, it kind of did, in my opinion, in that in that regard. So, yeah, and but. that is why I scream at the top of my lungs to use your goddamn hands on a <laughs> bro. Especially guys, guys. <laughs> especially guys. Yeah, in my there head, is like no it. reason, man. Get your <laughs> hands on for the for damn the ball and put contact. it on that setter's forehead. My goodness. That goodness. Was, yeah, it got me so pissed off. I was like, <laughs> this is how, like, as soon as I saw it going up, I was like, this is how it ends right here. Boom. This is, this is it. Yeah, this, this is, is it. <laughs> horrible pass, man. I couldn't yeah. believe it. Uh, oh, man. Well, let's hear it from our. A tra- easy transition kill, too. Because, oh, yeah. 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 You know. That would put it at 22-24, if I yeah. do recall, because yeah. they just got yep. a big serve it off of that. So, I mean. Yep. Yeah. That's what put them out of system and gave the free ball. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. Crazy and times, I, man. And then I was like, and then on top of it, to have that really, like, just moment. Like, I think the announcer said it, where it was like a kind of a moment-killing challenge. At the end yeah, of the that's where I feel yeah. like officials should really be like, yeah. match over, we're, they get we're done. They, like, they always, we all they knew, always do that. Everybody's going to do it. They do it at an international we, level. Spiral has done it a yeah. million times. Yeah. Like, he has. Oh, yeah. we're going to challenge this because I think yeah. there was a touch. But, but there this no is touch. kids, man. Like, this <laughs> is, you know <laughs> what I mean? I, I agreed with Kevin on that one. Like, he, yeah, I, I don't like that part of the challenge system yeah. at all. There should be a, yes. a line of sorts where maybe we can hold off and, like, just review the final point quickly and then let yeah. the moment be the moment or something. Yeah. But, like, to let yeah. the coach come in and – I don't know. Like yeah, you gotta like I, I think from a coaching perspective from the Hawaii side, right? You you have to I, you, you have, have to, to. You have but to like if, if that's me that like invested, you know like if that's me like no you fucking lost because you know you know why that play even happened is <laughs> because you shanked the overpass. Like I'm not yeah. challenging it. That's your fault. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm letting that kid live with that forever. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like, yeah, I, like, come on. It was a horrible pass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Keone, let's hear from you, our other uh, lovely island boy on the pod. How did yeah. how you feel in it, or favorite moments, and then some things that you noticed from a coaching perspective that some of the team, both teams, were doing to stay in the match. It's funny because, like I said, I I think I kind of. Um, I pointed out who I thought, you know, obviously did phenomenally. So most of the highlights I had were just from his play because he, I mean, talk about a kid. Like you had mentioned earlier, I don't know if that was on pot or off pot. I kind of forgot when we had the conversation, but I was like, you had mentioned earlier that he was kind of brought in, not even supposed to have played and kind of just did his thing. And honestly, for somebody, the mental capacity to come in to a championship game especially when you're not expecting to play and to absolutely show out like to me like it was mind blowing because to add that on top of what I was already cuz I like I said I don't keep up with it maybe he was like a maybe he's their guy so I really had no idea for you to share that extra fact that he <clears throat> literally wasn't expecting to play like that puts it just that this is like playoff jimmy like like yeah <laughs> it was, like it was crazy <laughs> yeah for him to have the that that mental capacity to literally just come in and do his thing and absolutely destroy them in the last like five points. Like honestly, like even when he made the call for the touch at the end there, even though it was in anyway, but I was just like, dude, this kid has that killer mentality. Cause like, 
obviously like it looked like uh had kind of shut down when it was already at that point where they were like down five and it was like you know just about to be over but for him to like you know go out there and you could see the confidence just oozing out of him at that point like it it was it was a crazy thing to see and even though i was a uh fan like i just became a fan of that kid just because of how absolutely phenomenally he played and um for him to show up like that but from a coaching perspective, it would like I said, I, I kind of mentioned it off pod, but I, I do understand now kind of your guys' points about kind of like the triple block thing. So there was a lot yeah. of moments like that yeah. where I saw UH, you know, trying to contain these big hitters on the UCLA side. And it just it sucked when it was always when it like there was a few plays, I think, where they had just like a tip that just went right over the block and nobody was there. And it bothered me so much because that was one of those things that like for me as a player and from being coached and also coaching like that's one thing you don't let happen like ever like I absolutely can't stand when it's like an easy ball like that and UCLA did a fantastic job I think they had one it was just barely missed by the pancake um that he attempted I think you're right yeah like, just his, barely nicked the cord his thumb right and there. his first finger but yeah, yeah, your yeah. whole hand has to be under the yeah, ball there friend exactly. that's that's how that works <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> and he was like, like oh come on come on yeah exactly bro I think there was the a hustle. lot of moments like that where I was kind of disappointed in UH for just not showing the fight because there was a lot of times where I felt like even though the ball is coming at you pretty rough, like, you know, you, you get a, you get an arm out there, you try even that point, I think um, at the very end, right? Like they, they hit it. The guy kind of shanks the pass a little bit, but nobody goes after it. And instead they're trying to call for the net at the end. And that bothers me so much. Cause it's like you play until that ball is down. Like you've run for that ball and make that pass. I think even uh, Tele had kind of one where it went, it shanked off, uh, off the serve, and um, he ran towards the announcer table or whatever, and he could have like maybe jumped up and tried, but he just stopped and let them let the ball hit. And I was kind of like, it's the championship game. You dive, like I don't care if you dive, dive and, and land. Yeah, <laughs> right. I was like, that was what Wilder did in Penn State, right? When they yeah. played Penn State, like yeah. he was yeah. in the announcer booth. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, <laughs> he was like that was cleaned them out there with yeah. them, bro. Back to you, Cotton. And runs back yeah, so it's like so. Really, my highlights were like highlights for UCLA mostly because that was what. It's just the fight was gone, and as a coach, like it's or as a player and a coach, like it's just hard to see. But UCLA made the adjustments, man. They decided to throw this guy in that they thought could just put away some balls, especially after UH made. Um, that run in the second in the second game or in the second set and honestly what they did by bringing out all their big hitters and kind of just having you know shutting down our outsides and like it just it was a phenomenal thing that's why spara is a national team coach yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. Yeah, you're yeah. right and uh, you know shout, shout out to you know galloway and the rest of those hitters but i mean honestly it showed too when you, you can't teach height and we say that all the time but they just had them big, big dudes Fantasy that could get up there. So that was, yeah, yeah. that was, yeah. that was some nice play. Yeah, absolutely. A, a lot of, a lot of that was impressive to me. And again, like uh, I think he said it in the post interview when they were um, cut, like getting the nets and all that set up for the the championship ceremony, that the plan was that like he had his normal starting middle in, who's more of a defensive middle because the um, I forget the tall kid's name that the. the uh, the light skin one, but he's he can do Fair. offense and defense. Yeah, yeah. So he can do offense and defense. So they don't worry about scoring as much with him. But the other guy is mainly I think he's like a pure blocking middle in those rotations. So when they got there, they realized like, hey, we need more offense for our young setter to kind of feel like he has a outlet to, and that's kind of where that decision came from. So you know, I'll, big kudos, man. You got to be yeah. ready to go uh, whenever that's your time decision. is called. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so Nolan, uh, you're you're thoughts and favorite moments, maybe some things you noticed from a coaching pr- perspective that stuck out to you on both sides um, of the court? You know, in total, I probably saw maybe like 20 points, but I think the one thing that I did notice, um, other than what my counterparts have already kind of mentioned, um, is both teams were very, for the most part, consistent when the ball was in play in being able to side out. You know, siding yes. out is the biggest part of volleyball. You lose a point, if you can get the ball back, you can win the game. That, that is how volleyball works. If you can side out the next point, you can side out the one after that. I usually tell my players two for one. You know, if you side out this next point, 
work on getting this next defensive play. Maybe we can get two points. If we lose a point after that, okay, restart the cycle, side out, work on a defensive play. Um, and I think that the if it wasn't for the service errors, I think this match could have been a lot less lopsided as it got to the third and fourth set, from what I could mm -hmm. tell, at least from the game cast kind of perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think starting off the teams were and especially in the second set the teams did such a great job of siding out you side out because you want to make sure that you are still the one with the higher points at the end of the set and i think that was a big thing for me when i at least saw the the short time on screen for me yeah absolutely yeah. um some a couple of things that i noticed big time as far as like how how ucla kind of orchestrated this this victory right mm -hmm. um obviously john Spraw's kind of trickled down a lot of those mentalities about the men's game of being absolutely live or die from the service line. Those like, I don't think at any point UCLA pulled back at all. And they happen to be a little hot on this night, which is the night you want to be hot on because I don't oh, think yeah. their errors really outweighed how many aces they actually ended up pulling off once they got past that second into the third and fourth sets. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is a testament to just having that mentality uh, run down through your team and how you coach that. Um, it's something that I try to do a little bit at the, even at the high school level of understanding, like guys, if we are confident and we serve and we serve tough, like that makes our lives so much easier. And it's kind of, you know, one of those things where it, it is the entire game. If you can't serve and pass, then you don't win a lot of games. And that showed big time because Hawaii what? held it, you know, you yeah, important? it's crazy. I know. But, um, and that was, that was the big difference for me for Hawaii because the first two sets, they they held UCLA's service attempts like and they only yeah. had one ace I think through all of those hundred like I, I did the math they did like they had like 118 points played in just the first three sets alone um so they held it to one ace and then it kind of ballooned and they started getting you know their their numbers later because it, it, after a while it's almost a war of attrition when you're just taking every one of these huge 75 mile an hour balls um coming at you um, and that kind of started to wear down another big thing um, that really isn't that out of character for UCLA, but I think it was particularly important because of the rotation that they kept choosing to expose was um, the matchup between Dobby and Chaz, because that seemed to be damn near automatic if it wasn't going to JR. Like I felt like that was a very clear, like we loved like Chaz is a phenomenal outside hitter. The kid jumps out of the gym. I love his serve. I love his little like, Charaz like charisma that he brings to the court. I think he's a great passer. Um, but I will say, I think his blocking does hold him back from maybe being in that USA gym as far as that level is concerned. And clearly John Sparrow wanted that matchup with David coming down, either, whether it was a D ball, whether it was a backside quick, whatever you could tell that like the young setter said, here's the playbook coach said, go back whenever I want to go away from Jr. And that's where, that kind of kept getting exposed in transition sometimes, but I think a lot of it has you know. to do with the the coaching adjustments that you make too, because I don't think I've ever seen Galloway drop into a seam once. No, and David was hitting yeah. a lot of angle. Like I get yeah. you want to go to the line first, and if it's on a if it's on a red ball, but on a D ball, like you want to leave that line for your libero. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and he yeah. he just failed to he just went straight up rather than just get up big and then just take that easy angle drop mm -hmm. and maybe get a touch here and there. But it's yeah. just like he let him have his way. He let the hitter literally own him the whole time. And that's the yeah. one thing like that that you teach, right? Exactly. It's, it's it's you show it and then you take it away. Or you say, Hey, I bet you can't hit line, so I'm gonna leave you ten feet of it and then you can <laughs> yeah. take it. And then maybe I'll maybe I'll take away five now. Oh, you can still yeah. hit it. Okay, maybe I'll take away three. And then as you go into angle, I'm gonna drop again. Like exactly. it's just those, those little that, adjustments though, that's tough, some... bro some crazy down the line shots that just literally like yeah. i mean we're and that kid's a sophomore yeah. by the way That's there's still two boy. more two it's more years of that boy. guy yeah. at ucla with yeah. uh with, with that setter is gonna be yeah with rowan is gonna be kind of kind of nuts and I, like i mean miles part like can we just not also acknowledge that <laughs> partain it was back in the gym like his avp season was done like he was back the last like, the month roster. Like, yeah, he's still on the roster. And that was the player of the year. So shout out to the Rowan for coming in and absolutely running the show, man. I mean, the kid yeah. was phenomenal. Um, I, I, It's a hot take, but I, I think he outset Tele for a while. You know what I mean? Like, it was yeah. it was just a kind of a thing. Once that front row option for him that he was so used to having all year, like Jared pointed out, got taken away. I, it was kind of interesting to see him not. 
like there was almost like a lag there from his processing of how he was flowing with the volleyball. And I'm, I was like waiting for that moment for it to start clicking and then to really start just saucing and outsmarting a kid that's way younger than him, doesn't have any of the experience that he has yeah. um, in, in comparison. But I mean, I, the kid, like once he got shut down, he got shut down and that's kind of the tail of the tape as far as that goes. Cause I agree. That was the other big note that I had in the, uh, that Jared noted from a coaching perspective it was like, clearly they said, we are going to make their setter a non-factor. Like he is not going to get aces on us. He is not going to turn two on us. He is going to only be able to set the volleyball. And that Mm -hmm. is it. And we are going to trust our front row to get hands on all their pins. And that's what they did. They executed. And that's a big part of it um, at the end of the day. So yeah, an absolutely phenomenal match. He had a couple, yeah. Did he? Oh, okay. he, had like, like, he had one that he actually got blocked, and I think it hit um, oh, yeah, Spiros yeah, yeah. or something going oh, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or hit the middle. Hit, hit Voss like yeah, mid air yeah. in his foot or something. Something yeah. crazy, yeah. Uh, and, uh, your your ace to error stat was ten to twenty two. By the way, there you go. Ten so aces to twenty two errors. Damn. You're, you're damn. You're daring. You're, you're almost at that one to two. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's kind of yeah. where that's, you. And that's where you want to be, right? Yeah. Horrible. Exactly. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounds horrible, but when you think about rally scoring, like, that's 10 yeah, yeah. free points. And if you play four sets of volleyball, you're only giving up 22 out of however many. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's 18 points in three. That stat you brought up, I was two. like, that's. Oh, yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I guess so that's. I yeah, like, I just counted up literally the total points from both sides, and that is how many they played through. It's like, like two Hawaii sets was, of volleyball. And, yeah. Hawaii was three and 13. Knees. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah, Hawaii okay. was three yeah. aces, 13 errors. See, not that's not the ratio that you want. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like one to four. Way almost. back down. Yeah. yeah. So you, if you live in that one to two range. Yeah. Um, that's what you some, want, the one to two that's range. That's perfect. Especially if you know? you're, you're uh, um, like you said, like Spiraz going to gun it from the back line. You want a one to two ratio. Yeah. You're living and dying, basically. You're saying Dude. we're scoring or getting in trouble every ball that we serve. Period. It says Nor- I think it said Norris had five aces and five service errors like so he perfect. was one for one basically perfect. that's like yep. that's what you want especially for a middle because you got to oh, play yeah. defense right afterwards so. right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um but yeah it, it was a phenomenal match though i yeah. think in, in total and, and very very glad that i got to sit down and be able to watch that and obviously chat about it with uh all of you lovely people because uh we're volleyball the people the boys is what we always do fun. right always fun Always a good time. Well, uh, let's uh, let people know where if they want to chime in on some things that they saw, maybe on a social media platform or two, where they can find all of you. Keone, I'll let you go first. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at K-O-N-E. That's K-A-Y-O-H-K-N-E-E. And Nolan? You guys can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Nolan K-Y-T, N-O-L-A-N-K-Y-T. Jared Shirai. I will. I am on Instagram and Twitch at J Shirai, J S H I R A I, and on Twitter at J Shirai eight oh eight. I'll try to post some videos from the VLA event. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah boy. I'll, I'll let you guys know though. Yeah, absolutely. And you can find me on Twitter at Jalen Holston, Instagram at Art by Jalen, and Twitch at Mocha Thanos underscore L G G. So that was another great episode of Team Huddle volleyball things, and maybe we'll get into some senior night nonsense or you know some humbling moments in the next episode for y'all but yeah so i've been me you've been you and uh good vibes and love everyone we will catch you in the next episode bang bang shoots boys